Hello and welcome to our podcast on how to read a movie. This is the analytical structure that we'll be using throughout our Lit to Film class to help us dissect films, have interesting conversations, put things back together, and fully analyze the films that we're watching. So let's go ahead and see what we're talking about. So by definition, we talk about three levels of film. The first level is the literary level. And so you'll see these are the things in film that films have in common with literature or books. The second level is the dramatic level, and these are the things that films have in common with live theater, such as plays or musicals. And then the third level is the cinematic level, and these are the things in film that are uniquely film. Awesome, so let's go ahead and look at each one in a little bit more depth. But before we do that, just consider the making of a film, and you can see why we choose this analytical structure. When films are made, they probably are being started with the written word, as in a script. And so the script is going to have all the things that are similar to literature. They're going to have plot. They're going to have characters, setting. The whole point is that it's going to teach a theme or a lesson. And so that is the literary level of film, the things that the film has in common with literature. At some point, that written word needs to become visual. Actors need to be chosen, sets and costumes need to be designed and created. And so once we have taken the written word and moved it to the visual realm, that is what films have in common with the dramatic level. And so it makes sense that just in the making of a film, once we start to make it visual, we might as well analyze the things that start to make it visual, moving from script to theater-like aspects. And then ultimately, you're going to make that movie. You're going to use the camera to frame, to use angles, to have motion, to add special effects and editing, things that only a movie can do. So you can see just in the making of a film, moving from script to making it visual to putting it all on film, that naturally overlaps with these three levels that we're talking about. So again, let's go ahead and see what each one is in detail. And so why do we do this? We use this structure because we want film to be more easily understood. We want to be able to take a very dense text, such as a movie that has so many moving parts, to break them down into smaller parts to give us more digestible chunks to look at. So we might want to take each part of our level structure, analyze it for what it is, and how is it similar to literature, then we can look at the visual elements of actor choice, costuming, etc. Then we can look at the film choices at that cinematic level. It would be pretty irresponsible to hand over a movie and just say, figure it out. Just like in a literature class, it would be irresponsible to hand over a book and just say, figure it out. I'm sure teachers are asking us to look at certain things within those novels in our literature classes. Well, we're using this one for characters this time. Oh, we're using this one for motifs. We're using this one for foreshadowing. We would do the same thing in film class. We would ask you to look at certain elements, and those elements are grouped by level. And once we figured out all the levels, then we have a better structure from which to analyze any film. That first level is that literary level, and these are the things that films share in common with literature, the written word, a novel, a short story, something like that. And when we're talking about literature, it's interesting because the reader is in control of the text. That reader can choose to keep reading, can choose to skip parts, can choose to think deeply about it, or can continue to just plow ahead and turn pages as fast as possible to get through the story and maybe focus only on plot. So it's interesting that when we're talking about a book, the reader is in control. That person could just shut the book and be done for a while. At the same time, the reader must be creative while reading. The words are there. Action is described, but the reader must work with that writer in order to get the full experience of the text. Literature has its own rules and grammar, and as we become more and more familiar with those through our literature classes, we can apply those rules also to film. So a couple of the literary level things that we'll be looking at and that really matter for film. First one is the idea of setting. A movie needs to be set in a physical location, needs to be set within a time period or over a certain period of time. And there are what we call limits and pressures created by that setting. So for example, if we put characters on a deserted island, they're going to be limited. They can't just fly away. They're not going to need to work together to maybe figure out their situation. That puts pressure on characters. And that is the setting, which is a literary element, doing that work in a film. We're going to need plot, just like in literature. We need to have the basic plot map, you know, exposition, rising action, climax, etc. You could also consider the more complex hero's journey which could be between 10 and 12 steps of depending on the model that you're looking at. But something needs to happen in literature and something needs to happen in film. And so we can see that overlap there for how those two work together. Characters, 
once we have a plot, somebody needs to do something. Those people are going to be the characters. Characters have to inhabit that plot. They have to progress the plot. They have to experience the plot and then learn lessons from that. And so just like in literature class, we're going to have static, dynamic, and foil characters in film. And so this will give us another realm for us to analyze when we're watching movies, just like we would in literature class. We also get to consider point of view. So just like in lit class, movies, we have to figure out who's telling the story, whose story is being told, and then how is that story being told? Who is our narrator? Who's really telling this? Is that a character in the story? Is that a character outside of the story? Do we hear that narrator's voice? Are they unreliable? I mean, we have some characters in film, just like we do in literature, that can't be trusted. They aren't straightforward. They may not have the full picture. They may be incapacitated in some way, so they don't really understand what's going on. And so just like literature class, film requires us to examine point of view as well. We can also examine archetypes at that literary level, and these are those common patterns that show up in literature across cultures, across time, across a genre. Things like water. Water as a symbol oftentimes stands for destruction, but also rebirth. Temptation can oftentimes be wrapped up into the symbol of an apple. Different geographies can help set the tone for the story. So archetypes, we have them in literature across culture, across setting, across genre, and we're going to see that those rules still apply in the film world as well. And ultimately, the reason we're reading literature is for the idea of theme. What is the author trying to teach us as humans through this piece of literature? Similarly, what is this director or producer trying to teach us about life through this film? So as we have become practiced at figuring out, oh, when I read Of Mice and Men, I'm really supposed to learn X, Y, or Z. Or when I read One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, or when I read The Hate You Give, I'm supposed to learn this about myself and about life. The same concept carries over into film. We are supposed to learn something about ourselves when we watch Saving Private Ryan, Do the Right Thing, Raiders of the Lost Ark. We're not in those movies. We're not going to probably experience looking for the Ark and being chased by Nazis, but we can still learn something about ourselves and about life and about the world through those films. So just like literature, movies offer theme, something that we should be looking at and learning from. So as we move on to the dramatic level, that's the second level of our structure. The dramatic level are the things that films share with live theater. And so we get a shifting in terms of control here. So the creator of the play or musical has been creative. They are presenting this action. We can now see it. We don't just have to read it. But the viewer is also in control of where they look. Unlike a book, they can't just stop the play or close the book, the play is going to go on. But all of the action is presented with a large stage in front of us. But we can still choose where to look. So while a character might be on stage left, we could choose to look to stage right to see what's going on there in the shadows from a minor character, from a secondary person. And so that control of the text is changing a little bit. Whereas in literature, we have to be co-creators with the writer. Here, we're still co-creators to an extent, but we also gain some more control where we can look around what has been presented to us. And if you study plays and musicals long enough, you'll see that they have their own rules and grammar too in terms of lighting in terms of costuming, in terms of actor choice. And those rules and grammar will overlay with what we're looking at in film. So the couple things we would consider in the dramatic level, first one is actor choice. We have to put somebody in this role that was written on paper. Who's that going to be? All actors have a range. They have strengths and weaknesses. They can't necessarily play every role. I mean, they could play every role, but they might not be good at every role. Steve Carell, pretty funny guy. Can he do dramatic roles? He can, but does that feel differently from when Denzel Washington does it, from when Kerry Washington does it, from when Julia Roberts plays those roles? Of course they do. And so as you move from the written word to the dramatic level and start to make your text visual, we now have to start considering actor choice. We're also going to need to put these actors into costume, makeup, and hair. There are grammars that go with costuming and with hair and with makeup choices and creating a world that may or may not really exist from the written word to that live theater. Somebody's making choices and we can interpret those as viewers and all of these things overlap with the costuming choices that will show up in film. 
set design. All the action has to take place somewhere. Again, in literature, they could describe a beach. They could describe a house. They could describe an ancient civilization. But once we start to make it visual, somebody has to make some choices. Are they going to use a set? Meaning on the back lot of some movie studio, they just build parts of a house in order to make it seem like they're actually on a house. Are they going to shoot this film on location? Are they actually going to go to the deserts of Tunisia? Are they going to go to the hills of Colorado? Or are they going to use green screen? Are they going to use some special effects to create a past that we can't create anymore? But once we move from the written word of what the script is telling us and start to make it visual, again, we're in that dramatic level. And really the bulk of this class, we're going to be looking at the cinematic level. These are the things in movies that are unique to film things that really don't overlap with live theater or even with the written word. Again, we get that shift in control. Here, the creator of the film is in control of what the viewer sees. Unlike literature, where we get to create what we think characters look like, or drama, where we could, you know, look to left or right of what's actually going on. In film, where we look is controlled by the director. If that person feels we need to look at a close-up, whether of a tear, a very small ring, some sort of foreshadowing event. The director makes that choice and we have to go with it. We can't say, oh, wait a second, I wanna see what's around the corner here to see if the bad guy's hiding behind the door. No, 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 we don't have that choice. The creator is in control. Now, we would still need to apply creativity in order to interpret because film, just like literature or drama, isn't perfectly 100% literal. We're going to have to think, but that control has changed just a little bit. And as we're going to see, the cinematic level also has its own rules and grammar. And as we learn those, we have more tools in the toolbox in order to help us interpret the films we're watching. So a quick overview here, are some of the things that will exist in the cinematic cinematic level, camera framing, angles in motion. What the camera sees is what we see. And so you will learn the grammar to these choices. What do long shots mean? What do low camera angles mean? What does a Dutch angle mean? And so A, we have to identify them, but then also seek to interpret them and connect them to our interaction with this text. So moving on to sound, I understand that there's sound in plays. There is sound in a musical, but cinematic sound is going to be different. We're going to get these two major ideas. What can characters hear? People walking, door slamming, gunshot. And what do characters not hear? This idea of soundtrack or score. And so sound plays a really important role in terms of creating emotion in viewers. Not necessarily about being realistic, but about creating emotion. Lighting, film allows us to focus attention on certain elements through lighting. Again, somewhat similar to the dramatic level because they do this on stage, but cinematic lighting is going to be different. And again, there is a grammar to these choices. High key lighting, low key, a backlit subject. They all mean certain things. And so as we look at one film and start to break them down, lighting is going to go in that cinematic level. And then of course, the cornerstone of film is the idea of special effects and the next slide of editing. Special effects is the creation or manipulation of any on-screen imagery that does not physically exist in real life. There are certain things that happen on film that cannot happen on stage or that happens significantly differently in a piece of literature, okay? creating a Yoda. These things look different in a book. If they're ever recreated on stage, they're gonna look a certain way, but film unleashes a new realm that computers and film can actually do. We can use CGI, this idea of just creating imagery through the computer. We can do compositing where we take different elements, put them together in layers or we can use what's called motion capture, where you have a performer dress up in a basically a green suit with little ping pong balls all over them. The camera captures that motion, and then somebody in post-production goes back and creates the motion from that person to be represented by, say, a dog or a dragon or a hobbit or something like that. And again, you can't really do that on stage, and it looks severely different than from a book. Like we said, editing, really a cornerstone of the film and cinematic level. This is, in essence, the cutting and pasting of shots into scenes, scenes into sequences, and then sequences become movies. It would be great to be able to edit our lives, to be able to cut out the boring parts, or to be able to slow down the really interesting parts of our life. And so we can't do that in real life. 
we get some editing in terms of pieces of literature where things are included or not. We can't really do that at the dramatic level because the show must go on kind of stuff. But film offers us the chance to redo, reshoot, re-edit, repaste things together, bring in different storytelling devices that you can't do at the other levels. So as we look at editing, that is the cornerstone of the cinematic level. And so that's about it. This will be our framework for the entire year. We will start to build our knowledge at that literary level and ideas that overlap with lit class. We will slowly build upon that, get into the dramatic level, and then get to the bulk of the class, which is that cinematic level, the things that make films uniquely films. So keep this in mind as we go, figure out where things can be compartmentalized, put them all together, and you'll have a better structure with which to analyze film with. Thanks so much. As always, if you have any questions, please bring those into class. Otherwise, we will see you soon. Thanks.